morning everybody today i'm going to show you how to paint um, mist in watercolor you can basically do most of these exercises in acrylic also or oil using pretty much the same techniques so even if you're not using watercolor um, just have a go and and see how they go uh, i would do a demonstration of watercolor acrylic and oil all at once but we'd be here forever so I'm trying to do a sort of alternate weeks, one watercolour, one acrylic demonstration, um, just to be fair to all painters. Um, so like I said, we're going to do mist in watercolour. Um, don't be frightened to ask questions, leave comments. Uh, please subscribe and like my page. It helps enormously. And you can also see me on my Facebook page for... Uh, weekly tutorials, um, art chats on Thursday mornings at 11 o'clock. Um, I think I'm going to continue on Facebook uh, because the YouTube, I don't think many people have access to the live setting on YouTube. So anyway, I will talk to you a little bit more about that later. Um, you can also watch this back anytime and, and please share with everybody they're all free so you know take advantage while you can okay so we're going to do two um, little paintings one with trees one with hills we have done this before in um, sessions in, in Carmarthen um, so some of you will be um, familiar with these techniques but some of you won't and some of you might just need a little bit of extra uh, practice so the first one we're going to do are the trees you need some clean water, some round brushes uh, and some colour uh, and some tissue, um, toilet roll or um, kitchen roll um, is usually quite useful. OK, so we're just going to wet the paper. So this is a wet in wet technique and it's quite quick. Um, it's useful to have a hairdryer if you have one available if you want to motor through these um, tutorials. Um, it does help so nice and wet and then what you want to do is take a, a smallish uh, round brush or something that's got some sort of point to it um, you could use a rigger brush or something like that so I'm going to show you how to paint trees as well in, in the process of this um, demonstration so I've got some Payne's Grey mixed up here. Payne's Grey with a little bit of alizarin crimson again. Um, and it's quite, for the moment, it's quite thin. So I'm just going to start by putting some faint trees in the background. I'm just going to move my water over a bit because I need to sort of use a specific technique. So we're just going to draw a line using our brush like this. OK, um, and we're going to do that several times over the paper. Like this. I'm not too worried about the blooming. This is called blooming that's happening at the top, as you'll find out later. I'm just going to put some faint suggestions of the tree trunks coming up out of the mist okay and I'm going to carry on I'm going to do a few more down here but I'm going to do them slightly darker like so some small ones and some big ones like so okay So this, like I said, is quite a quick um, demonstration. So as the paper dries off, you'll see that you can just extend those lines up a little. And you shouldn't get as much blooming. You will get a little bit if it's still a little bit wet. So where it's a little bit wet, just leave off for a, a second. Just extend those lines upwards like so okay let it dry off a little and 
Now, at this stage, what you can do is you can put some colour down. I'm just going to put some colour using a bigger brush in this sort of area here. In a, in a line coming downwards like so. And I'm going to put slightly darker, a little bit more Payne's Grey in the mix down here. Okay, to that bottom section, I'm going to take a semi-dry brush. So I've just, all I've done is I've wiped it off on the side of the pot and I'm just going to soften the edge of that area in to the background. So, like I said, this is just one way of creating a misty effect, one of many. You can see that it's already looking a bit misty there because it was quite wet in that area. So just soften those areas in, like so. And we've already got a misty effect. You can see that, can't you? So if if you're, for, for some reason your paper has dried off or whatever, then what you can do is you can either take a dry paper towel and just dab out. Can you see how that... So I'm just softening the underside of that wet area like that. And that will again give you a misty effect. Or you can take a wet paper towel. So it's not dripping. It must just be wet, right? So not, not dripping wet, just soggy. And just press again into those areas and you'll get that sort of misty layered effect okay so that's two techniques so um sorry three techniques one was just painting in the paint and letting it soften into the background the second one was using a dry paper towel to lift off areas of mist and then the third one was using the the wet paper towel okay and you can repeat this exercise um over and over again what have I done with my, ah, oh, there's my rigger. Right, okay. So I'm picking up the almost, the really thick paint now. And I'm just going to start putting in, oh, I've got a hair, um, a couple of trees up here. So I'm using a rigger brush here. And I'm just going to flick outwards from the trunk like that. Outwards from the trunk. To give you a nice outline of a pine tree. Um, we're going to leave some of the softer trees. I'm just going to put the darker ones in for now. So again, take the paint and just flick from the trunk outwards. It's often quite nice to leave sort of broken uh, edges, a few dots at the top, outwards, like so. And then bring the colour down into the wet areas. So again, nice long tree trunk like that and then flick outwards the more broken these lines are the better it looks so but just continue if you can working outwards from the center of the trunk so that you don't get th the thicker marks on the outside of the branches because then it looks a bit weird okay so again i'm just going to take this up 
here and I'm going to flick outwards Obviously, the, the the density will be more towards the bottom of the tree trunk rather than the top. So just think about that when you're putting it in. Loose, nervous hands will give you a nicer effect than something that's very stiff. Okay, so we put another one, another couple down here, like that, and again, oops. Don't worry about that, I'll sort that out in a minute. So again, really loose marks will give you a more effective tree. And some of these trees would be very, very bitty in places. So again, just make them very random and don't try not to make them all look the same because that will give you a very odd looking effect. Like that, okay. So I'm just gonna sort that one out, that blob that I, I created accidentally, just draw up and put in some fainter ones. So, to do the fainter ones, you can do those first, the, the ones in the distance and the ones that are coming up out of the, the mist. Just wash, add more water to your pigment and just put the odd one in. You can see that's still a little bit dark. So it's amazing how just a touch of tone of pigment in your um, your mix will give you a really subtle let's deal with this one effect so like I said those blooms will add to your trees in the distance and just keep adding until you're happy so there's the misty effect in that area. Okay, you can, if you feel like you need more mist, then just repeat the exercises that I, I showed you earlier on, either by using a um, damp paper towel to lift off your mist, or you can lift it off with your paintbrush like we did with the clouds, um, the rays. So there's no reason why you couldn't add more mist into this image if you wanted to. I'm just gonna add a little bit more darkness into that one so we can't see that middle line coming out of there. Okay, so I'm going to, oh, actually, I'll just deal with that one. Just a spindle there, I think. And the fainter they go in the background, the more effective they'll be. It'll give you that feeling of perspective happening. Just put a few more faint dots in. Okay, so if you feel like, for example, that this area here is too harsh, and you want it to be a bit more misty, then you can take a semi-dry brush and just push away 
at the bottom of that tree like this with your brush and the water and once you've got the paint moving you'll see that it starts to come up what you want to do then is take a clean paper towel and just press it once press don't move it if you move it you'll irritate your paper and it will leave a a sort of misted effect there and like I said the other way to do it is to just use a wet paper towel wet paper towel but not dripping and just press into the paint so let's see should we lift off a bit here so like I said just press into the paint but you can see that the pigment is coming up onto the tissue so make sure that you turn the tissue up and keep using clean tissue the effect is not as strong on pale pigment so just remember that so if we wanted a little bit I'll try and lift some here just press your paper towel down let it soak in before you lift it off and you'll see bits of pigment will come up onto your um, paper towel so keep turning and you'll see that the marks will come okay so that's one way of um, creating mist in a picture the other way is to do wet on dry and to lift off using a paper towel um, so again we will put a wash of I'm going to use a little bit of cerulean blue um, here all right and I'm going to just wash that all the way down like so pick off that hair that hair Ooh, put it back okay that's just a, a very pale undercoat so that you don't have white mist you know mist is not white mist is like a um a, a very very pale blue color okay i'm just going to dry this off quickly Okay, so we're just going to put in some mountains, okay, and these are going to have mist at the bottom of them. So I'm going to mix up a darker, a slightly darker tone of blue, using a little bit of um, ultramarine or some kind of inky blue mixed with the uh, cerulean. Okay, now these hills are in the distance, so we don't want them to be too dark. However, um, we're going to need layers so what I'm going to do first before I put the color on is I'm going to almost paint in one section of mountain with water all right um, so I'm just going to put a little mountain there My water's a bit dirty, but that doesn't matter. All right, okay, so then we put the colour in. And the colour should only go to where your water's gone to. Okay. Now, one way of making the mist is just to leave it um, and put a little touch of extra colour at the top of your hill, like this. And you can leave that to settle and that will form natural um, a, a natural sort of misty section at the bottom that's just by putting less color down okay so that's one technique just less color so I'm just going to put again I'm just going to put a little touch of you don't want to make this too dark because like I said it's in the distance 
right? So don't make it too dark. That meaning as in um, dark in pigment. So nice and watery. So you can see that the misty effect is happening there already. I'm just going to dry that one off because that's one technique. So like I said, that's just with addition of paint. So you're basically wetting the area um, and just adding more paint on the top side of that area so that the bottom side looks a bit misty. It's just application of paint simply. The next technique is actually to lift, um, lift the area off, okay? So again, I'm gonna paint a mountain in using water as a base, okay? So this mountain is going to come up there like that and then down there like that. So wet your paper. So this is a different technique. Wet your paper, add your colour. So this time I'm going to add a little bit more pigment into my mix. I'm going to put the pigment in. And you hope that you've spread your, you, that you've dried off your picture enough, the distant hill, that is. So this time I'm going to fill that area with pigment. Completely fill it. Make it really dark, like that. So I'm filling that watery section up with pigment and you can see that that mountain is slightly darker than this mountain because it's nearer to us. All right. Now this time, all you need to do, this is the second technique, is to scrunch up. Now it's important that you don't use the straight sides because obviously you'll get an inorganic shape then. So sort of tuck your edges in so that you get a broken rounded shape no sort of corners if you can get them yeah and then all you're doing is you're just lifting off the base of that color and that will give you your misty effect again have it broken up, don't just sort of create almost like a childlike cloud. And it's a good idea to change so that you've got nice clean tissue each time. Can you see how that's broken and it's not just a sort of cloudy shape like that? Okay, so that's the second technique. So we've got just putting paint down, lifting off, uh, wet on wet with um, a dry paper towel. Okay, so third technique. So we're going with the same mix, slightly darker again. I'm going to darken it up this time with a little bit of Payne's Grey because I want those hills to start coming forward on me. So this time I'm just going to use um, the paint as it is. I'm not going to wet it underneath, okay? So we're going to have a hill coming down here. I didn't dry that off. Um, so you can see what happens when you don't dry something off. Actually, it's not doing, it's not behaving too badly. Um, it's quite a nice effect, actually, if the background is, is slightly wet, because you get sort of a misty effect happening naturally. So this one is just wet on dry with dark pigment and we're going to just put in a slight line there like that so this is wet on dry with just pigment okay and if you let that dry it would form a hard edge 
hard edge being you know like that okay so this time what we're going to do is we're going to take a paper towel we're going to use a dirty one because it doesn't matter um, because we're working with darker tone here I'm just going to wet it but wet it so it's not dripping and I'm just going to put in the water back in on that edge down the bottom and I'm going to dab it downwards so as with all these techniques it is just about you finding which one you prefer okay so you can see what I've done there I've just dragged it downwards um, and that has created a misty effect okay so again I'm gonna just push up this paint into that because there was a bit of an edge forming there and a bit of an edge forming there and there so I'm just going to re-wet that there okay so that's the third technique so you can keep going with that forever more and just working through oh fourth technique I mean it's all it's all about lifting off really in the end it's just different ways of doing it so let's do one more um, and again because this is in the foreground I'm going to add a little bit of colour into it this time. I'm going to put some purple in just to give it an extra edge of colour. Purple into the Payne's Grey. And I'm going to leave this wet again. And I'm just going to put in another faint line there like that. So I'm drawing with my paintbrush. And you'll see that where it's wet, it'll... it'll sort of go misty naturally into the background so if you leave your background wet it will give you another layer to the work so again I'm working wet on dry and I'm just going to soften the underside of this and I'm just going to put a few little blobs in the foreground here because again we are working with um, an area that's closer to us we can afford to put a few more details in so we would see the the edges of trees and things like that coming up from that area okay so again i'm going to use at this time i'm just going to use the wet brush lifting technique so semi wet brush and i'm just going to again um, make a mark and then wipe it clean your brush off otherwise you'll spread this color too far so every time just wipe it off in clean water dry it off a little and just touch the paper a couple of times and then go back and repeat it wipe it off clean water clean water dry it off and just soften that underside. Okay, clean water and drag it down further if you feel you need to, like that. Now you can see that this, uh, this edge here is a little bit boring, so I'm just going to work up into that area. And you can do the same technique by, again, just dabbing areas off like that okay clean paper towel if you want to finish this then dry it off take some fairly thick pigment just put in a line along the bottom so a diagonal line like that is quite nice and then what you can do is just flick up slightly with your brush just to give that idea that there might be some trees or whatever structures down that foreground that are a bit clearer like so okay and then if you fancy it 
I know some of you love birds. Then you can pop a few birds in. Pick up a small detail brush and just put, and birds are basically just a little dot like that and then just a couple of wings like so. A little dot in the middle and then a couple of wings like that. A little dot. Try and alter, have some shapes that are not the same so that you don't get this sort of build up of similar looking birds. We've got a lot of red kites here, so you can look at them out of your window and actually practice drawing some of them. They're very acrobatic birds, so they tend to do a lot of diving and fly, flinging themselves around in the air, so they're quite interesting to watch. Okay, so uh, dry it off. Okay, move all my stuff out of the way and I'll take off the masking tape and then you can see the finished article. So just to refresh, there's lots of ways of making mist clouds in your watercolours or acrylics. Um, lifting off with a, a semi-dry brush, lifting off with a dry paper towel and lifting off with a wet paper towel. They're the main three. Um, whether you work in a wet in wet style like I did this first um, or not is up to you. Uh, you can see that the different techniques leave different types of finish. So that's very soft. This has left a little bit of a hard edge. It depends how hard your clouds are. They might be very um, strong clouds, so therefore you might need a hard edge like that. Um, the tissue paper tends to leave a slightly softer edge, but as you can see, they're all very effective. Okay, that's the end of that tutorial. Please subscribe. Um, and leave comments and I will see you next week. Bye!